why Ohio State when it got right down to it? Every time I visited Ohio State, I felt like it was a place for me. Everything about it was great. Coach Meyer, the coaching staff, he's put together one of the best coaching staffs in the nation. And uh, I really like working with these guys. There's none of this. Well, let these guys develop for a year or two and then we'll play. It's the immediate pressure and expectation to play right away. How do you guys feel about that? Is it, how much of a drawing point was that for you guys to come here? Uh, you know, Coach Meyer always he always tells us that he wants his incoming freshmen to play early. Uh, he wants us not to sit back and relax and just wait for the next guy to leave out, but to practice every day like you're competing for a job and uh, attack every drill like it's your last drill. Has it been a bit of a culture shock of the expectations and the, and the, it's hard? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a total change from the workouts that we do. Time that we spend at the Woody, the time that we spend academically, everything is a whole culture shock. But you know, if you want to be great, then you have to put in the time. Great, Quan. Was it made clear to you that they need help at this position? I mean, it was it was implemented, but I know that nothing is given at Ohio State, and I had to come in and work just like everybody else. Are you a middle linebacker all the way, or might you play different positions right now? Uh, wherever I can help out on the field, I'll play. But. Primarily middle linebacker. What do you feel like, I mean, it's so early, what do you feel like you need to get better at as we sit here right now to be able to play as a true freshman? My all-around game, becoming a better guy mentally and physically, working hard in the weight room and in the film room, learning the whole defense because I, I can't be put on the field if I really don't know what's going on out there, so everything all around. Rick Vaughn, how big of a benefit is it being here early then, getting a head start? <laughs> it's a benefit getting a head start on the workouts, getting in shape early getting ready for spring ball because in the last couple of years you see a spring ball the guys who do who do good and thrive in the spring ball are the ones who play. Rick on how, how much of a challenge is it to step up and play as a freshman though? I mean you've been here for a couple, for a month now and stuff. You've seen guys, you've heard the coaches I think talk about you as being physically ready it does appear and stuff. But what, what how big is this challenge as you look at it? I mean, yeah move his hand. Uh, competition is sure. competition is what it is here. Every day I come in with the mindset that the five the five star stuff in high school really don't matter anymore. All that can be thrown in the trash can right now because I'm just a freshman in college right now. Who got here in January that nobody knew and on the football team, but I had to come in, work hard just like everybody else and make a name for myself so I can do it too. You threw your overcoat in the trash can too, did you? <laughs> <laughs> How tough has that been, I mean, to deal with the, uh, the weather, so to speak? Uh, I mean, it's been an adjustment. It's not really that bad. I'd rather be cold than hot. Yeah. Rick, one, how do you think, are you worried about the idea of like picking up a defense and understanding all the intricacies of a college defense? Or do you think you're a guy who will be able to get that pretty quickly? I think I'll be able to get to it pretty quickly because, you know, in high school I was I was told to run the defense on the field, make adjustments according to the offense on the field. So uh, me and Coach Fickle are putting in work right now. And Coach Carpenter, we're putting in work. Just trying to get get to the point where some of the guys are on the on the at the linebacker group, learning from some of the older guys, and even some of the walk-ons, some of the smartest guys on the team. So just picking up information from them each day and learning from them. As well. What did you think? Can you explain that a little bit more? The idea of in high school of running the defense. I mean, what, what was that like for you? Did you like that? Was what kind of things went into that for you as a high school player? Uh, the whole thing going into that. Is your coach has to have trust in you, and uh, I felt like in high school, everybody on my coaching staff trusted me that even if I did make a bad a bad call or something like that on the field, that I'll go 100. percent Even though even though it's wrong, you still go 100 percent and fly to the ball. So that that makes up for a lot of errors. As you look back on your recruitment, are you surprised how much it, it kind of blew up? It came so time I'm sure you knew it was going to be a big story, but it was a huge story. Uh, just reflect on that if you would. Yeah, uh, coming from a small town like Hinesville, Georgia, you, know, you don't expect a lot of people to come around there and come see you play football. But bringing in a lot of tickets, a lot of sales to the game, it, it was very, it was very fun. But high, but high school's over with now, man. It's time to get on to 107,000 people. Was it a close call? How would, how would you describe it as far as uh, between Ohio State and Clemson, some of the, some of your other uh, choices? I mean, it was, it was a pretty close call. It could have went either way at the end. I just felt like Ohio State was the best place.
Rick, how many times were you asking your recruitment who leads for you? And after a while, it seemed like you were pretty down with that question. Yeah, I was asked about every day uh, who leads for me. <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm here now. If you could change something about the recruiting, what would you change about Rick Warren? I mean, a lot of guys wait until today to make up their minds. Some guys are waiting to pass the bell. I mean, what would you – you were extremely high profile to have, but you made up your mind earlier. So what would you change about it? The only thing I would change is how many people can call you just randomly out of, out of nowhere. It should be a limit on how many people can call you. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. About how, how, it how bad did it get at, at, it, at its worst point from that standpoint? It, it wasn't really bad for me. It was just that some, some nights I would get calls when I'm trying to go to sleep or something like that. Yeah. That's about the worst thing. Hey, what, what, uh, you've, you've heard Coach Meyer say this. I don't know if he said this to your face or not, but he's told us that he thinks you have a great chance to play this year and play a lot and stuff. And I, I just wonder, has he like challenged you to step up to it? I mean, just to talk about the challenge you kind of face in that regard. You know, you know there's an opportunity if you come through. Yeah, I'm. Coach Meyer told me I come here, nothing's gonna be given to me. I gotta compete just like everybody else. I have good. Yes, I have a good chance of starting, but it's not. It's all gonna go to waste if I don't put in the work right now. But how does it change things when you know the opportunity is there as opposed to you're stepping in behind somebody? You know what I mean? That, uh, I mean, you got to come in with the same attitude each way because if you come in with the mindset that you're going to sit somebody, sit behind somebody and just relax and not work out hard. Or if you feel like you can be starting and you come in and work hard. I mean, both of the, both of the situations would kind, of, would kind of be messed up if you didn't work hard in either one. Yeah. So in both of them, you would have to come and work hard because they make – it's a standard here that you gotta come in. You gotta come in the weight room smiling every day. You gotta come on the field, ready to work every day. Give it, give it your all. Open up your chest. And give the coaches your heart and let, let them train you. Ray Ray Kwan, you have, what's the sense you have of how important this linebacker group of recruits is to this team? And the linebackers are the quarterbacks of the defense. Uh, Coach Fickle, he's coached some of the greatest linebackers in college football. I can start naming them: AJ Hawk, and James Laurinaitis. Bobby Carpenter, the list goes on and on. But in the last three or four years, they haven't had that solid guy in the middle who can run the whole show. And, uh, yeah, we have some great players come through at linebacker who got drafted, but uh, he's looking for that one guy that can run the whole show on defense. Who are the, who are the guys, Raekwon, that play linebacker that you really enjoy watching at NFL or maybe even college that you find your eyes are fixed on when, when you're watching a game? You know, I, I like watching the San Francisco 49ers linebackers uh, flying around to the football, Navarro Bowman, mm -hmm. Patrick Willis. I like guys coming out the edges too, like Clay Matthews and DeMarcus Ware. I like to watch them a lot too. How well do you know Sam and Kyle and Dante at this point? Do you feel like you have much of a relationship with them or you have to wait till they get here? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty cool with all of them, but uh, me and Dante talk more through the recruiting process because he tried to recruit me harder. I met Kyle in Oregon, and I met Sam on a visit here. So, uh, they're all cool guys, and we all are ready to work together. What was the what was the first time that you that Ohio State ever became a real possibility for you? Do you remember like what it was that, that sparked your interest to even put the Buckeyes in the mix for you? Yeah, the first time I came up to, I came up here and visited Coach Meyer, I sat down and talked to him. He just had an engaging feeling. And I felt like he could be one of the guys that I would want to play for one day. You've talked to Nick Saban too, right? Yeah. And a few other guys, Dabo Sweeney. What's what's common among those guys? What's common between Nick Saban and Urban Meyer? Uh, they both they both want excellence, <laughs> nothing less. They don't want to be sitting at the end of the season watching somebody else play in the national championship. They want to they want to be in the big shows. That's about. What's the biggest difference between those two guys? The biggest difference between them? Yeah, Personality-wise or whatever. One's at Alabama, one's at Ohio State. <laughs> Great point. For a lot of you guys, when you were getting recruited to Ohio State, you know, they were on this long winning streak. They were undefeated last year. They were undefeated so long this year. What was it like for you watching them then lose to Michigan State and lose to Clemson? Did it sort of change your view of anything? Not that you weren't going to come here, but just sort of how you looked at Ohio State or looked at what you had to do here. Uh, I just I saw the games. Uh, it was they were about three or four plays away from playing the national championship game. Uh, everybody on the team gave it all out there in the Big Ten championship and the Orange Bowl. Uh, 
Other teams have great players too. Clemson has some great players. Michigan State makes some great plays. Uh, like I said, it's three, four, or five plays away from playing the national championship game. And once you get there, it's, it's anybody's game. Do you ever like watch those and think to yourself like, oh man, I could make a difference. You know, maybe I could be a guy who could help with those three or four plays away. I mean, it's easy to say that from sitting in the house. You know, you're not out there running, running, making tackles out there, flying around at the, at the speed of the game that they are. So it's easy to say it from home. But you have to say you saw some opportunity, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> any recruit would have said, yeah, I could have did that, I could have did this. <laughs> just like I said, man. But uh, it was, I like I liked watching it because it just showed that after the game, Coach Meyer called me and we just talked about how he wanted me to uh, – Come in and compete for the job this year. Quick one. Defense took a couple more questions. Quite a bit of criticism from the media this year. I mean, did you ever see any of that? Hear any of it? And kind of take it personal, even though you're not a part of that team yet. Uh, you know, I just anytime that the defense took criticism, it always came back on, came back down on Coach Fickle. But uh, the whole time, I felt like Coach Fickle was a great coach. Even some of the fans were down on him or something like that, telling him. Saying all kinds of things about Coach Fickle, but I just felt that at the end of the day, he's a great coach. Uh, he has a great track record, and history doesn't lie. So why would I mean you got a great feeling from Coach Meyer, but is it hard for a kid from the South to come up and play here? <laughs> is it hard? Uh, it's, With the snow on the ground outside, we're sitting here freezing. I mean, it's, it's not really hard. Because, you know, uh, if, you, if you really want to be somewhere, you're going to go, regardless of what temperature it is or how cold it is or something like that, how much it snows outside. Because it, once you love a place, once you fall in love with a place, you just want to be there all the time. How much does winning a national championship come up in the recruiting process? Is that something that coaches say to you or that you talk to coaches about, that very specific goal of winning a national title? Yeah, everybody wants a chance to win a national championship. Only a few teams actually have a good chance of winning. It's, it's a big part of recruiting. Most most coaches at big time programs use the recruiting pitch that we could, we had the chance to win the national championship. They also like like to add in if we had you or if we had this and that. But you just got to know who's BSing you and who's not. Raekwon, thank you very much. Thank you, Raekwon. Thank you.